Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dana Ashaya is a Palestinian woman born and raised in the colonised, occupied West Bank and has seen with her own eyes what real-life settler colonialism and land theft look like. She's finishing her Master's degree in International Relations at the okay. University of Melbourne and is an organising member of Uni Melb for Palestine Action Group which has been challenging Melbourne University and their management over their complicity of the genocide and oppression of the Palestinian people and all oppressed people around the world through their weapons manufacturers during ties. So um, over to you, Dana. Thank you, Annette. Um, before I start, I just want to acknowledge um, the traditional, rightful, and ongoing owners of the land, the Wurundjeri people. Um, this land, um, sovereignty has never been ceded. Um, my name is Dana, Dana Shair in Arabic. Um, in English, I could go with the Shair. Um, I am currently a student at Melbourne University. I'm finishing my master's degree um, doing international relations. and I am one of the founding members and organizers of um, a newly found action group for Palestine called Unimal for Palestine. Um, this group came to exist as a response to the university's ongoing silence and complicity in the genocide in Gaza and the oppression of the Palestinian people across Palestine and oppression of all oppressed people around the world um, through their multiple weapons, manufacturing ties and, um, and deals. Um, so we've been working um, on campus as a UNML for Palestine for the past six months, almost. Um, but before that, I've been in Australia for two and a half, almost two and two years. Um, yeah, two years and two months now. I came here on a scholarship, so I am planning um, to go back home um, late July this year to go back to Palestine. Um since the very first semester that um, I had in the university, I've been um, advocating and um, basically uh, being extremely involved in activism for Palestine um, alongside many other amazing individuals um, from students and staff and faculty um, at the University of Melbourne. We have passed um, a Palestine motion in AMSU's which is a student union from, from Melbourne University. Um, we have passed a Palestine motion calling on the university to endorse the boycott divestment movement and recognize Palestinians' right to self-determination and Palestinians' right to live freely and end the occupation. Unfortunately, um, we have faced a lawsuit from a Zionist student and several Zionist organizations. Um, and unfortunately, the student union had to settle um, for many reasons, um, including the fact that um, this lawsuit could have is going on for two years and the possibility of us going to the Supreme Court in Australia was extremely high. And although we know that um, if you look at the facts, if you look at everything, um, we should win um, this lawsuit um, as part of our freedom of speech as students and as student union. Um, and this should be given, however, um, we also realize that the Australian system is also built on settler colonialism and embodies within it the notions of settler colonialism and oppression of indigenous peoples and First Nations peoples. So we know that it was extremely risky for us to go to the Supreme Court, which will most likely side with the Zionist students and Zionist institutions over Palestinians' right to free speech on campuses. Um, so I know like there's a lot of talks about um, student activism on campuses um, and about several manifestations of how Australian universities are complicit in the ongoing oppression of Palestinians in Gaza and across Palestine. Um, and I think it, it's it's a bit surprising for a lot of people um, to understand the gravity of the complicity of these educational institutions. And um, some people think that um, simply because you're not directly holding the weapon, the gun against oppressed people, then this means that you're not complicit in their oppression, which is not true. 
Um, for example, taking Melbourne University as an example, um, complicity manifests in so many different forms. Um, one of them is silence, utter silence, um, that shows the racism of Australian educational system in general and Australian universities, um, institutions that are supposed to uphold the values of freedom of speech, the values of human rights, the respect for international laws and humanitarian laws. Um, it genuinely all crumbled down in the past six months um, publicly. Uh, Melbourne University has been fully silent on the systematic annulation of the Palestinian educational system in Gaza, the systematic um, targeting of Palestinian academics and uh, school students and university students and vice chancellors, um, the, the systematic destruction of every single university in Gaza and more than 75% of schools in Gaza. Um, but not only that, we have, we're learning day after day that our university's complicity and many other universities in Australia, it's not just Melbourne, it's almost every single university here, go, goes much beyond um, simple, you know, being silent um, or neutral or just like not taking a stance. Um, they are actively involved in the supply chain of the genocide. For example, Melbourne, Melbourne University has partnerships with 16 different um, weapons manufacturing companies, including the world the world's largest weapons manufacturer, um, Lockheed Martin. Uh, they also have partnerships with Boeing, partnerships and ties. These partnerships and ties um, come at, um, comes at, um, looking like different forms, um, research funds, um, grants, partnerships. Um, infrastructures, building infrastructure and buildings and labs um, for these companies. So Lockheed Martin, um, Boeing, BAE system, these are the three largest weapons manufacturers in the world, besides having a direct contact or direct partnership with Rosebank Engineering, which is an Australian company that produces components for um, the F-35 fighter jets, which is the most lethal fighter jet um, to have ever been produced um, in history of mankind. And this is a, a product of Lockheed Martin, which Israel acquired tens and tens of these um, fighter jets and have just signed a deal um, for, I think, um, $3 billion to buy more uh, fighter jets F-35s. So Melbourne University has different um, ties with these weapons manufacturers, and you know we've been we've been advocating we've been working really hard to pressure them to push them to cut these ties to try and bring sense into them, but they fully refuse to engage with us and to understand what we're talking about. And you know we're we're at a point where um there's a lot of you know arguments um including one from the vice chancellor most recently that but it like oh it's it's barely anything it's only 3.5 million dollars that we have taken so far it it's not enough to do anything and despite the principle itself some of the research that is being done is being most probably used by companies like Lockheed Martin we're talking about research regarding um, autonomous un unmanned vehicles and drones. We're talking about a swarm of drones. We're talking about um, cyber security and cyber communication technologies. We're talking about technologies and research that's being used to develop and produce weapons and bombs and missiles and, and um, fighter jets. Um, but to, to also like a big portion of that research is being blockaded from um, the public. We do not know what kind of research is being done. These are the things that we were able to access publicly, but there's a lot of um, research that we do not know what it's doing exactly, these grants and these funds. We, we don't know what they're facilitating, what kind of technologies they're producing. And, um, you know, this is just like talking about Lockheed Martin, BA system as well, um, and Boeing. They're, they're developing um, airspace, laser, um, technologies, um, things to make weapons and aircrafts more, le more lethal. And um, we're seeing the direct result of this kind of research being used against Palestinians, innocent Palestinians in Gaza and across Palestine. 
Um, we're, we're at a point where, according to the Euromed Human Rights Monitor, we have over 43,000 Palestinians killed. And this number is an unjust estimation of the real numbers of tens of thousands of innocent people that have been killed and still under the rubble. But we've tried to, to reason with the university that it doesn't matter if you're taking money from these companies, um, these weapons companies to produce research about the environment or research about um, how to go to, how to, um, to create a cure for COVID, it doesn't matter. It's the principle of blood money that we're fighting against. It's the, the principles of the corruption that they're doing. You cannot whitewash blood money. You are taking money from these companies that are profiting off of the slaughter and murder of Palestinians in Gaza, not just Palestinians, but every oppressed people around the world that are being killed um, by their by different authoritarian regimes and Western imperial regimes like the American regime there and like NATO and like um, 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 the Saudi regime in Yemen. All of these regimes are using these weapons to kill innocent people and civilians. And they're making money off of killing people. And you're taking that money. And it doesn't matter the purpose that you choose to put that money in. It just doesn't matter. It's unethical and it is blood money. And we refuse that. And, um, you know, it's it's been extremely hard corruption in this university and in all honesty across all different universities in Australia is shocking. It's, it's extremely sickening um, to know that they fully willingly and knowingly um, are happy to take blood money. Um, for example, Melbourne, Melbourne University alone has over $300 million of research funds and grants and partnerships and ties and deals with Australian defense with the Defense Science Institute. So the more we look into it, the more shocking and sickening it is. And it truly is, has become, um, it's become very hard. Um, we do have targets on our back as students who are um, advocating for Melbourne University to cut ties with weapons manufacturers. We have targets on our backs um, from Zionist organizations and Zionist groups on and off campus. Um, for example, I have a West Bank ID. Um, I don't have an Australian passport. I don't have any other nationality. So once I'm done, I'm going to go back to Palestine. I'm going to go back to the West Bank. Everything that I'm doing now, I'm doing it fully knowing that I'm putting myself at risk and I'm putting my safety at risk when I go back because I genuinely do not know their precautions of my activism. But we're at a point where the price that we are paying is much we're paying if we are silenced silenced is much more than the price we're gonna pay if we talk the 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 guilt the weight of us knowing that in our own capacity we can create a change even if it's on the smallest level even if it even if it means um helping one person to realize um their role, their indirect and direct role that they're very unconscious of um, in oppressing people around the world, then, you know, this is, this is also a success. So it, to me, I feel like we're at a point where all of us need to start mobilizing, to start fighting oppression and injustices. Um, it's, it's really important that um, we realize that it's not about making Palestine, you know, um, the entire... Um, you know, to take over our entire lives as non-Palestinians for many people. But it's about making fighting injustices and oppression a part of our daily life. I'm realizing how we um, are contributing um, without our consent, with our tax money, um, with our contribution to, to the government and several organizations that we're also, we're also supplying this oppression and this genocide and these wars without realizing that. And um, someone someone wrote small wins. Um, I didn't read it in the <laughs> chat, but but um, we we have you know despite all the censorship and the silencing and despite um, you know the ongoing um, attempt to silence um, myself and all of the members of Unimel for Palestine and all of the faculty members and staff members that have been um, um, vocal about Palestine, 
um, we have not stopped. And I think it's important to also talk about the small wins that we can do. For example, um, Melbourne University decided to host um, decided to host Boeing. Uh, Boeing is one of the lar- one of the largest um, weapons manufacturers companies. I think it's uh, number three or number two. Um, and as students, we signed up and we went there into that forum to ask questions. Our main goal was to ask questions and get answers. Um, instead, we were basically kicked out. We were called aggressive um, on International Women's Day. Um, they refused to answer our questions. They refused to 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 um, um, to engage with us. And you know, it goes to show how fragile the system is. Um, they're happy to be complicit in the genocide, you know, Boeing and other companies, but they're not. But they're too uncomfortable to answer questions about their complicity in the genocide. Um, so we canceled that event. It ended up being canceled. And this is a, a clear message for all war monitors and for all those um, uh, people who are and organizations complicit in the genocide that there's no business as usual. You are not welcomed here by students or anyone. You will not have these safe. You do not have a right to something called a safe space. You are complicit in a genocide. You are not welcomed here. And you know this. We also had another um, minor win or a small win. Um, the, the university, believe it or not, wanted to host an Israeli professor directly complicit in the genocide in Gaza. Have been working with the Israeli Defense Ministry. Have been working with um, different organizations that receive funding directly from um, U.S. Air Forces and from the Israeli government to manufacture um, unmanned drones and fighter jets and um, autonomous weapons um, for Elbit Systems and Raphael um, company, two Israeli companies that, um, weapons companies that are the biggest exporters um, or Israel's biggest um, sources of of drones and weapons. So we canceled that. We called, we emailed, we put pressure on the university and we canceled it. So it's important to talk about um, these small wins. Um, I think I'm just going to wrap up now um, and, it, and if anyone has any questions. Oh, well, thank you very much, Donna. You have answered one of the questions that came through from Jonathan about, um, you know, any small wins. And I think you've just answered that. Um, I think uh, we need to name Israel as a rogue state. It's unanswerable to anyone other than itself and this current far-right government. And all your work is so important. And I think we all acknowledge and value the fact that you have, you and many others are putting your lives on the line by speaking out. So, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, now, now there is another question here in the chat, um, and it says uh, it's from Michael Walker. It says how many Uni Melbourne students have got active in campus actions? So just a bit of a rough idea of how many people have been mobilised at the university. So um, we launched an open letter to, to sign by students, alumni, and um, staff members. Um, and so far, I think we have had around um, 5,000, 6,000 signatures. But also on the ground, um, unfortunately, the silencing policies and the censorship policies that Melbourne University is deploying against Palestinian students and pro-Palestinian students have been extremely um, violent, I will say. Uh, not necessarily physical violence, but there's um, emotional violence um, being deployed. We are being followed around by um, security guards on campus. Um, we are being called aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we are being labeled um, as a threat to students and staff and visitors, despite the fact that hundreds of students have participated in um, our calls to actions, which mainly focused on calling emailing, posting, um, having small talks with your friends. You know, we have adopted nothing but respectful and peaceful means because at the end of the day, we're students and we respect other students on campus. And we also want, this is not about, um, you know, guilt tripping students who do not know what's happening because they have been um, systematically, um, you know, um, systematically um, been unformed. Um, but our role is to educate these students and let them make the choice. And since we started, 
um, six months ago until this day, we have had tens and tens of students who didn't know in the beginning what was happening. And now they have joined us. Uh, most of our activities, like I said, are very targeted. Um, sometimes you have to be very careful about publicizing something such as, you know, the Boeing action, um, asking these questions. Um, so we have, you know, we have over 7,500 um, you know, uh, people following our page on Instagram, on socials, um, including from Australia and outside of Australia. Um, we have, you know, luckily we have had many academics from across so-called Australia and from um, America, the US, Canada and Europe um, and the Middle East reach out to us and students as well, student um, groups um, on campuses, including US Berkeley, for example, reach out to us and say how proud they are of the things that we're doing in Australia because it seems to me that this is something that is um, maybe the level that we're working um, in is a bit unprecedented in terms of student activism for Palestine on campuses. So I would say like we had a few actions um, on campus. We had um, a talk, a speak out for Palestine just yesterday as part of um, the Global Day of Action for Palestine. And it was, you know, we we had very little time to announce it. Um, we didn't really expect a lot of people to come because there, wa there were um, a lot of actions taking place in Melbourne yesterday, very successful actions, and um, hundreds of people attended these actions. So we expected mm. maybe 20 students. We ended up, ended up with almost 60, 70 students um, showing up, which was extremely mm -hmm. wonderful. We yeah. had the speak out. Um, students are being vocal in their classes despite the silencing, despite the censorship. Um, we had a die-in in front of Duncan Maskell's office where we had almost 120 students. Um, many people could not show up due to the timing and due to their classes. But I would say that we are a growing movement and we are seeing that manifest um, both on campus and off campus. Yeah, good on you, Dana. And Dana. Um, Ross has got his hand up and please feel free to put your hand up if you want to um, comment or ask Dana a question. Ross? Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dana. Um, I actually did have a question <clears throat> similar to what Michael asked, except about the staff at the university and their organised expression, namely the union of, of the staff there. But I, I just did want to also say that for, and you can look around the room here, Many of us have been sort of involved in the broader peace movement for many years. And for a lot of years, when we held rallies and, and public meetings and so on, most of the people who ended up coming to those had grey hair like us. <laughs> and now when, you know, for the last six months, every weekend, thousands of young people have come out. And, you know, you and, and your fellow young people who are, active and who are you know the bravery and the passion of you is such an inspiration to us i cannot tell you how fantastic <laughs> it feels for all of us to see you building this movement Thank week you. by week because it's a long process and it's a long and hard struggle as you've said and it's just a real inspiration to us to hear you tonight thank you so much yes thank you thank you yeah. Any other comments or questions from people here? <coughs> I guess what I would ask, Dana, um, and I know that um, you, you're probably getting support from outside of the university, um, and I really appreciate, you know, your um, knowledge and understanding that, you know, how Palestine fits into the broader um, oppression um, that's um, being experienced by people around the world in, in many different countries. Um, I think that maturity of knowledge and understanding is also what we have seen in Brisbane when we've listened to the Palestinian speakers at the various rallies that we've attended. And uh, there's a great appreciation for our, our, uh, our support and our, our presence at those rallies and, and meetings and so on. Um, but um, I, I suppose I'd be interested to know um, uh, if if you've got any other areas uh, that you, any other suggestions of, of support that you might, um, you know, have have thought about um, in what you're doing. And, and I guess it's for when you go home as well. If you're, if you're going to be back in the West Bank, 
in July. I mean, that's, for me, it sounds very scary because it's not just Gaza that's experiencing the, 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 the trauma and the war, yeah. In terms of maintaining our support, because that's that's important as well, the to ongoing support. Mm. Yeah, um, you know, I think there's there's been um there's different ways of support and solidarity, and um I know that everyone does what they can within their own capacity, but I think we're we're at a point in history where the most significant and impactful and critical kind of support that we need right now is people to show up and speak up. You know, I see a lot of people donating money, but not but refusing to engage in, in conversations or refusing to engage in the discourse of, you know, a decolonial discourse um, towards freedom and towards liberation and towards people's right to self-determination and to live freely. And, um, you know, like, I, I've I've had this conversation with a lot of people and I always say the most critical thing right now is to speak truth to power. This is the way that this has changed so many people in the past six months, the way that it had actually and genuinely created a change within, um, be it the younger generations or um, people who are, um, or the older generation, um, the way that having these conversations that can be uncomfortable and can be comfortable at the same time, but they can also be uncomfortable because we're not used to being this confronting. We're not used to having a conversation where we call things the way they are. We're not used to we're not used to to this system that has been exposed and bared down to its bone um, by the Palestinians. Um, you know, people genuinely believed in the universality of human rights and international laws and then this happens the genocide happens the zionist regime is committing the most hideous war crimes and crimes against humanity that we have ever seen and you know francisca albanese um the special rapporteur for for the un for the um, yeah. occupied palestinian territories said something that really resonates with every palestinian she said this is the result of 76 years of impunity, 76 years of a state being drunk on impunity. We are seeing soldiers sharing their war crimes, sniping and killing children, and sharing these war crimes on TikToks and um, Instagrams and social media for content and for fun. So I think we, you know, this collective effort of everyone to keep talking and exposing um, is one of the most important things and forms of solidarity, but also showing up to rallies um, when we can, of course, um, showing up to rallies, um, pressuring, because I think what a lot of people do not realize is that the power they have as a nation, you are, pay you are paying taxes, you have a right and you have a say to where these taxes are going. You have a right, you elect your your politicians and your representatives to represent you, not the other way around. They're supposed to represent you. You you hold so much power. And with that power, you can put Palestine on the map. I'm sorry. You can put Palestine on the map. You can force these representatives that want your votes to have to make Palestine part of their plan, part of their politics, to make Palestine part of this bigger um, picture to change the the foreign and internal policies regarding Palestine because if you're not representing what the people want then why are you there you know th this power people need to realize that they have it absolutely